Okay, two birds with one stone, or actually I don't like throwing stones at birds, <laughs> or at anything, except for maybe skipping stones across water. Hard to find real flat ones. This is a corrupted or failed Linksys RE 6700 beam forming AC 1200 wireless range extenders, the same as the RE 6400. 6700 just has a pass through outlet. Why they have two different models and when they should have just always had the pass through outlet style. Who knows? Not like it's a whole lot of extra money for them to include that. Anyway, this is a corrupted unit. Uh, it turns on and seems to work properly. Um, but whenever you go into like the administration page, it constantly is resetting. Going back to login page, the wireless uh, connection is actually resetting, disconnects. You let it sit and plug, or warm up for a good couple of hours and it kind of behaves a little bit better. I think it either, it's either a, fail, a failed firmware upgrade where it has a partially corrupted firmware or it's just the processing, the processor electronics have uh, started to fail on this. Who knows if that was just due to a surge or just bad luck. Uh, I per preferentially, I've had better personal luck with Netgear products. Uh, and actually right now I'm using an ASUS uh, RT uh, AC68U router. But I've generally had pretty good luck. And Linksys router is okay, but Linksys is like Belkin's premium brand and they never really have been uh, the greatest. None of their products really have made me as excited and seem to be as reliable for me as Netgear anyway. Uh, the, when you have a corrupted version of one of these, once again, it just constantly is either resetting the admin page, you can't access pages, it doesn't matter if you access it wirely or you plug an Ethernet cable directly into your computer, excuse me, or laptop. It always uh, just it isn't responding, it takes a, a long time to respond. Um, and once again, you click on various things on the admin page and it will reset to the login page or the page, web page won't load properly. will just be like text without any of the graphics or formatting, kind of like web pages from, you know, the early days of the internet 25 years ago. So no documentation or there's no videos or anything, even Google links about a corrupted or self-resetting uh, one of these. And so this is a documented and of course there isn't any... I shouldn't say, of course, there's a lot of teardown videos, but there are no teardown videos of this. So it doesn't seem like it's super common because I wasn't able to find any forms. Pull out these little gummies here covering up the screws. But this is definitely one of them. And those are the conditions that you would see is it seems to kind of turn on and work. doesn't matter if you factory reset it, uh, leave it plugged in. It just is constantly, once again, just resetting itself and just not being cooperative doesn't allow you to get into the firmware page to try to upload the firmware. For some reason, it wouldn't pick up wireless signals that were like super strong. I had to actually move this like 30 feet away to try to just go through the normal wizard, figuring maybe it was an early firmware issue, but nothing would make it cooperate. It just kept on resetting and failing. So anyway, getting inside this, we have three screws. One, of course, under the sticker. and two up in these corners. Now these things are kind of handy. They work better if you actually connect an Ethernet cable between this and your main router, then becomes an access point. Otherwise, how these work is they relay the wireless signal. So this would connect to your main wireless router. You would put it relatively close to your wireless router, but say it's your wireless routers in the living room and you want to have better Wi-Fi signal in the bedroom, you wouldn't put this in the bedroom because it would be too far away and it would be really slow. You would say put this in the hallway, then it's pretty close or has a strong signal, and then it will repeat that signal or relay it to you in the bedroom, giving you just better access. Or maybe it's in the living room, you might put this in the kitchen so that you have better access or wireless signal uh, maybe outside in the front yard or the backyard. And that's always the kind of the deal with these is that you always want to have them um, be pretty close to the signal that they're repeating. But when you're using them wirelessly, then they end up having issues where uh, you're hopping. You're going from wireless to this, and then this is then relaying the wireless signal. So it adds a bunch of extra uh, wireless traffic to the air, your local airwaves, the easiest way of putting it. And... Uh, this thing really doesn't want to cooperate. 
there we go anyway there's a look inside here and so anyway that double relay does make them slower where if you plug it in directly to the ethernet it becomes an access point so it basically makes your router become two pieces with uh, this just being like a highly remote antenna another little secret about these wireless range extenders is you can use them as ethernet connected wi-fi adapters so if you have an older system or a system that has a really old or like laptop or something has a really old wi-fi adapter or your desktop doesn't have a wi-fi adapter you can plug this in by ethernet and then use one of these to connect to your Wi-Fi or if you're like in an apartment or something you have to connect to a community Wi-Fi then you can use one of these to do exactly that maybe put it on the back porch it seems to be actually it's fairly heavy fairly substantial we have screws holding on the plug I don't know if these are antennas or if they're shields they may be shields just to prevent you know inductive interference from the outlet from interfering with the uh, rest of the product but let's go ahead and pull out all these other screws it's always a shame to run into these things when they are failed um, particularly because I've run into the, several of the RE6400 series the ones without the pass-through outlet and they've all seen I've had a few of them over the years and they all seem to have worked out fine you know they show up at the junk stores and stuff that's where I found this one and uh, of course this one was not one of the lucky ones wow that screw is really really tight all the screws in this are pretty tight and that's a significantly different screw interestingly enough the ones holding down the motherboard are whoop I just dropped it no it actually seems like it's the same size sorry to lose the frame there I'm trying to it's hard to see through the screen just for some reason oh it was that one this one's really loose that was kind of interesting why that one was so tight oh yeah this foam is all crusty this also could be that the internal power supply may have failed uh, I think I got all the screws out of there yeah that's really with how hard this foam is that's what I'm suspecting is that it's actually a power supply issue that's why it kind of shows up and responds but then not really pop that up and there's our whole motherboard there then we have a plastic shield here that appears as to be a snap-in affair and then we have our power supply Wow, there's just a whole bunch of screws that are holding this thing together. And the for these two wires here are the Wi-Fi antennas. And they are, yeah, these things right here must be some type of shield. Be real careful. Actually, the trick to removing these little Wi-Fi antennas, if you're, you know, upgrading a laptop or anything, is actually hold on to the back while you're prying them, and that kind of helps prevent them from being stable you don't want them to lift up and fold over because then it'll just destroy the connector these are called RPSMAs or SMAs I think or something like that but just holding on to the top of them and kind of just wiggling and being ginger will allow you to get them released I see this these little panels are screwed onto the circuit board here So remove those screws initially I thought these were the power wires but they're not there we go so those are the two antenna cables here's our little shield and heat sink interestingly enough Oh, that's interesting. This is one of the little connectors that was soldered to the motherboard here to screw on that little shield, and it actually popped off. So there's our motherboard. It actually connects to these little four terminals here onto that plug there. It's a modular design in order to uh, get it to connect to the power supply, and that's it's. I'm highly suspicious that this the root issue with this is 
fact that it has a failed power supply or a power supply that is failing. It's either not putting out the appropriate voltage. It's a little tiny um, switching power supply, so maybe it's failing. The switching power supplies can fail in a variety of ways. One is that they can put out, they can undervolt. Sometimes they overvolt, but really most times they'll either put out too low of a voltage or something will trip them and they'll just constantly be resetting. And that's kind of seems what's hap what uh, appears to be happening here. I'll see if I can't get this section popped up. It looks like I can. I mean, it is a decent modular design. And so this is that whole pass-through section. There's just a little bit of uh, inductors to help do some filtering of high frequency noise. And then it's relaying the power down to the main board. As far as how this other plastic piece is held in here, it's kind of interesting or kind of confusing. I'm wondering how we, how these two plastic halves are actually held together here. I wonder if it's something like this. There are a couple little clips on the edge there. There's going to be some friction from Yeah, so this panel here comes up. Friction from it going down on the the pegs there. It just does not want to come off of there. And there are a couple screws that go through that hold on this part. So I know that this should be what comes up first and it doesn't want to I know how to fix that it's called getting a bigger screwdriver yep I stepped away from the video I didn't want to deal with pausing and oh, I kind of broke the board there I don't know why this does not want to come up there's like no screw down into there. These little screws thought just held these terminals. Maybe I'm an idiot and I should have removed these first. There are little cutouts to get at those. I don't think that's going to help me much. Oh, it does. Or it seems like it should. Oh, indeed. So those, you do have to remove those two terminals. God, this thing is super uncooperative. I just don't know why <sighs> this is interesting so there is there's a cross screw through here if I spend a little bit more time looking through it as I disassemble of course there is no disassembly instructions for most of this stuff so that's what was holding it all together I didn't have to force it you just have to remove those two screws from this side and then that cross screw which I assume is for the ground and then that comes off more normally. Then you can get out these two screws, which will hold this kind of basic filter board to the pass-through outlet. So pretty complicated little compact design. And once again, with the camera teardowns and other various teardowns I do, I do them just to kind of understand some of these things and things like cross screws and order operations is important. If it was something I really needed to fix then I would of course spend more time on it but of course this is just being a video and it's already taken 
much longer. So a couple little filter uh, inductors and a little capacitor for filtration on the input board. And then we just have the power supply, which doesn't seem to be held in by much of, if much of, or if anything. At least it shouldn't be, and it isn't. So there's our power supply. That's kind of interesting. I don't think that's insulation. I think that the way it's squished in it almost seems like it's a thermal pad, but it's just a, the plastic body. Oh, I see it is it's for the controller here. Here's our little power supply. Output. Oh, and they conveniently put glue on it. So something, something, 1.5 amps glue on the chip. So I'm going to try to scrape this off. I just want to see if this is like a 5 volt or a 12 volt power supply. I'm probably going to ruin the silk screening just trying to figure out what the voltage is. Or I could test it. Other than that, it's just a small compact little switching power supply so who knows what is starting to fail on this if this is truly the root cause. But this is a significant portion of the weight. And then we'll get a closer look. That's actually like a uh, termination chip for the Ethernet port, our wireless WPS setup button, the little factory reset button. We have probably what's related to pull this up. These are probably some of the Wi Fi chips under here, and then this is probably the CPU pull up these cans yeah that must be the CPU because we have additional thermal pads under that um, and I guess all they were using is this as a heat sink so this may have been uh, either a shield because of the pass-through outlet or all of them whether or not they have the pass-through outlet will have this being the heat sink and so that would be our memory chip and then there's our processor and then we have like another little can on the back side. So what this may be is, uh, I don't know what this chip is. There's a bunch of chips. You can see how complicated these are because they have a little web server. So probably a RAM, a CPU. These are probably actually the signal amplifier chips for the Wi-Fi. And then this is probably the actual Wi-Fi controller chip. Anyway. Just a video uh, documenting that these types of uh, devices do fail and how they fail, which is uh, just acting really strange, rebooting, not able to upgrade firmware, constantly de uh, resetting, and then of course, tearing one down. Some people can see what's inside it, even though it took me way too long. Anyway, I really appreciate everybody who's been watching and subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, please do. Till next time, Caddis Maximus out.